Hello everybody, it's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. In this video, Bachelor Clayton Ecker defends Bachelor Zach Shall Cross, says people are so quick to draw conclusions with Zach. Now, of course, Clayton uh, was... Uh, accused of so many different things, being a red flag city on his ep on his season of The Bachelor. You know, he kind of, I don't know if he raised his voice, but he got in fights and had disagreements, and he says he lacked empathy in certain moments, but he says he's a good guy, and I believe him. We've seen so much good come from Clayton after being on the show, so it really makes you wonder, was he the problem, or was he just cherry-picked tough tough times in a you know heightened situation that he was in as he was probably sleep deprived and looking for love and all that so as we've seen former bachelors uh ben higgins and former bachelor nick vial criticize zach here's a more recent former bachelor clayton eckard saying hey let's pump the brakes so i'm going to share the play-by-play -play, but first let's hear a few clips of what nick of what clayton had to say um, regarding his relationship with Susie. There was somebody that opened up on the show uh, to me. They Hold got, on, this isn't Susie. This is a different clip. Very vulnerable. I was going to send them home that night because they got very emotional and vulnerable. And I was like, I cannot send them home right now. I'm going to keep them um, a, a little while longer. Uh, and that came back to bite me. They ended up uh, stirring up some drama in the house. There was somebody that... So what Clayton is saying is... Zach's received a lot of criticism for like nipping things in the bud and sending people home and Clayton saying there was someone he should have sent home but he didn't and because of that they created drama some people are wondering is this Shanae is this Sarah H who do you guys think leave a comment who the heck's he talking about and then in the other clip here uh we have Clayton uh talking about his relationship with Susie so if you can, obviously people care and want to know what is your relationship like with Susie today? And also within that, if you could speak to how you got to the place of health so that you could be like you two are today. And if I would have never met her, I would not be half the person I am today. She taught me manners, the power of chivalry. And so when I think of my exes now, I, I, I think of all the lessons they taught me, not the pain that they caused me. So, so he says, I think of the lessons they taught me and not the pain they caused me and of course some people will just always twist it the wrong way one commenter says credits her for being a better man so she did all the emotional work lol got it like jesus h christ what do you want from this guy he basically gets dumped by Susie and gets crushed i'm assuming he's, he's obviously sounded so emotional about it and now we're upset that oh maybe she had to maybe she taught him a few things maybe he taught her a few things either way i just think it's very funny of course here he was and we'll get to the new clip but here he was um on us weekly breaking down talking about his yeah relationship. I, uh look he's crying I'm get a little emotional, oh god it just sucked because um yeah like our last day together we had already knew that we were ending things um but i stayed in a couple extra days after we broke up and you know we just turned on a movie and just cracked up and laughed all right so there's clayton just getting getting emotional we should be embracing and congratulating a former male lead for showing his emotions it's okay clayton you can cry i'm not gonna judge you i'm not gonna feel a little bit weird that you're showing emotions we need to normalize that okay so anyway here he is on today's episode defending zach shall cross on the almost famous podcast so much. No, no not at all well greer's back um she is quarantined successfully from covid uh brooklyn is ready to take the next step in their relationship she seems very excited for what is to come uh and obviously hometowns is next week so there is a lot in this episode it, it does feel um pressure packed uh, I'll kind of guide us through the opening here. You know, Zach is is obviously feeling the pressure, right? I mean, uh, you were just there. It's been years for me. And so this pressure this week, knowing that families are next week, is it, do you feel like there's, uh, you know, more pressure to it? Or is this just another week in the process of trying to find your per person? Well, a thousand percent, it's, there's more pressure to it. I mean, think in anyone that's listening to the real world uh, application of this, uh, usually go on a couple of dates with somebody and, or maybe, I don't know, five, six, whatever it is. But then a big step in that relationship is, hey, uh, I want you to meet my brother or sister. I want you to meet my family. That's a big, big step. Um, so I think most people can relate to that. And that's where Zach, you know, his his mindset is I'm going to be uh, meeting some of these women's families and eventually they'll meet mine as well. Um, but, you know, time is of the essence. And I think. Uh, we, we got to see a glimpse of that 
uh, with the Greer situation where, uh, you know, and, and, and also with Zach, I mean, with COVID striking and having to quarantine, uh, when time is everything and you have all these incredible people around you, but you're trying to get down to the nitty gritty and be like, who is really the person for me? You need every waking moment. And everyone, uh, as, as we spoke with Dr. Diane Strakowski last week, and again, her analogy is far better said than I'm going to regurgitate here, but she says, we're all like tea. We don't realize our flavor until we're dropped in hot, hot water. And one way that we are dropped in hot water in life is when we are on a time crunch. Like, let me tell you something. Whenever I'm packing for a flight and it's an hour before we got to leave and my lady has and zipped her suitcase yet let me tell you something that's when you learn a little bit of something about life whenever you you know time time is a, a, a precious commodity and when you're working against it you do see the flaring of the limbic system you know you don't have to be a dummy to be zach shell cross or clayton eckard and realize oh my gosh i'm on episode seven by episode eight i have to marry somebody and of course you don't have to do anything but take jess uh, um Take Jess, uh, J- what's her name? Gil- Gilrod? I can't, Gilroy, I can't remember her last name. But Jess, on episode seven, I believe, knew she hadn't gotten a, a one on one date yet. And she knew that time was not looking good for her. And it's because of that that um, she did some crazy, you know, that she sort of ruminated and this and that. And we, we this is how we act on, in, you know, life. We cry on our birthday. We turn 30. We turn 40. We hit these milestones and we realize we only have so many heartbeats. And um, sometimes it stresses us out, which of course doesn't help the cause. But that's just natural how we do it. So Clayton, being a recent bachelor, understands this. And also, uh, Ben Higgins and Nick Vial, yes, they were hated uh, in, in certain ways during their seasons. Maybe maybe Nick more than Ben. Um, it wasn't as vicious as it is today. The, something happened post-COVID or, or during COVID where it's even worse and harder for these leads. So maybe they're worried about making the wrong decisions here. I don't know. I'm just I'm just hypothesizing. Is that a word? What's actually going down? Uh, so I think we saw that first and foremost was uh, that pressure build up. And I think Zach started to feel that in the episode where he thought, man, I, I need every moment, but I've been sidelined. And now I have another individual who's sidelined. How do I make this right decision? Am I going to make it off of a recency effect? The last person I saw that made me feel good? Or am I going to still, you know, am I going to be able to make this decision off of how I felt a week ago? But as you and I both know, man, a week in, in the bachelor world, um, a lot can happen with every single conversation. So, you know, let's chat for a second about Greer. Obviously, in the episode, we see, you know, uh, that Greer goes home. She quarantines, shows up, goes home. Uh, are you surprised by this? Um, shocked by this? Let's take production out of it and say, why in the world did Zach just not say, Greer, hey, you weren't making it two weeks ago? Uh, or a week ago, you know, so don't come to Budapest or wherever you're hiding. Uh, it's not worth it for you. Yeah. You know, my thought was, uh, based off of the interaction when I saw them first two come back together, Mm -hmm. uh, was that Zach was probably trying to see if that spark was still there. Um, and, and so he, I, I think also, uh, maybe he felt that, Hey, I, I gotta give her a chance, right? I can't just say, Oh, sorry, you got COVID. So now it's over. I think, you know, Zach had had a strong connection with her early on, from what I recall, and, and thought, you know, there's something here. There was something here. Um, and, and I want to see if I, if I see her again after not seeing her for a week, what type of feeling am I going to have internally? Wow, what an interesting conversation between Zach Shell Cross and Ben Higgins. Now, look, I'm not here to criticize Nick uh, Vial, but Nick's response was, I'm so done with Zach. Every week, Zach uh, hears some of the women's uh, expressing their insecurity instead of showing uh, an ounce of empathy. He just drowns in disappointment. So uh, Nick sees this from a frustrated eye and thinking he could do better. And I don't know what the personality trait is when somebody thinks they can do better, but Nick was on the show and he didn't really really do better and it's important to remember that you know a lot of times we do what's called Monday morning quarterbacking which is where we go oh he should have passed it to Stevenson he, sh- he shouldn't have got sacked on in you know, a third down we think about and, and it's we act as if we were there when in fact we wouldn't do any better but in this case it's almost like Nick Vial was a quarterback didn't do better and now says man if I was a quarterback I would do better and again Ben Higgins has done the same thing it's there's probably a psychological term to this where we we're all like we have a leading man syndrome where we think well if i was there i would do this but what we forget is the show is edited and curated in a way where 
he's doing the best he can. Zach Shellcross is doing the best he can given the information he has, and we don't know what the producers are telling him and this and that. Uh, have I been overly critical of Zach? I don't believe so, um, and not, not to the, the extent Nick has, but it's for sure interesting to see Zach uh, what appears to be very dismissive. Now, we've talked about Dr. Diane Strakowski. You can go listen to the conversation. And we say, look, he's probably got a personality type that gets rigid in certain situations. And rather than maybe explore some of the conversations with others, he sends them home. And maybe that's something he learns about himself and whatnot. But it's it's dangerous to even um, speculate because we're just speculating on an edited TV show. This isn't Big Brother where we watch the full, you know, and again, I, obviously that's edited too, right? I don't watch it. But it's this isn't just some deposition where you get to see the person's mannerisms and how they respond to everything. There may be instances where Zach was perfectly reasonable with some, but of course and by the way happy happy belated international women's day it was yesterday uh but just like my women i wanted my uh happy women's day to be late because <laughs> she's late for dinner no she's not okay all right you see i tried to make a joke there probably came off sexist all right inclusion uh so what we've got here is what was my point i've digressed so far down the wormhole i don't even know where i'm going uh so we've got uh to have that ability to know that people are trying the best with the information they have and Zach, how that relates to him, we're going to have to see. We're going to have to see on the live episodes when he does the After the Final Rose, uh, how he dis or Women Tell All, how he discusses watching it back. You know, Clayton learned a ton about himself watching it back. It's almost a blessing in some ways that they get to do this experiment because you and I, you know, we just go through life thinking we're the leading man, leading woman, and we don't always get called on the areas that we have blind spots. And it's important to uh, shine light on those dark places. We say light is uh, the greatest disinfectant. So it's important to do that. But if we always think that someone else is the problem, that's the most dangerous place you can be. And if you're like a know-it-all type, maybe you think you know everything and you can't possibly learn more. Whereas Clayton is operating, as far as I can tell, from a place where he's in a growth mindset. He's taking everything with a grain of salt. Or he's learning about himself, and he's applying that to his critical eye on how he watches Zach, and he says, give Zach some credit. All right, let me know what you guys think. i more got more content coming your way. Link in the comment section for today's Bachelor Rush Hour podcast. We'll have some original uh, stuff going on over there, so you can go check that out. Uh, every episode of Bachelor Rush Hour, the podcast, has a couple clips of... Uh, uh, the news that we got to today, plus a couple added things about some daily life, uh, you know, what's going on with me. I've got about another week or so in Indonesia, but um, if you didn't check out my other videos today, I got to tell you, I think we're throwing fastballs right down the middle. I think, I think, uh, I think, uh, in, I think a little bit of travel, maybe I was jet lagged for a few days, but the Coke Zero is hitting right, and I'm glad you guys are still with me. We'll see you uh, right after this for Bachelor Rush Hour, the podcast. Link in the comment section below.